Hi, my name is Molly Gazay, and you are listening to a Living Album Podcast, Episode 14, Emily Billig. It is April! Um, I am so excited that it's starting to kind of start to feel like it's not winter, um, although crazy weather. And um, today, actually, as I'm recording this, we had an earthquake um, which was like 4.8, I think, or 4.7, somewhere in there. Um, which is really weird because as a Californian, I'm like, I didn't really feel it. <laughs> so walking my dog and I was like, huh, what, uh, what's going on? Um, so for those of you New Yorkers who are listening, welcome, welcome to the experience. Um, I heard somebody go, I've never experienced an earthquake before. And I was like, Wow, like I experienced one when I was like two um, and it was like a really, really big one. So anyway, I digress. We are not here to talk about the earthquake that I felt today. We are here to talk about Emily Billig, who is my guest for this uh, amazing podcast episode. And um, just thank you to everyone also. Um, this episode is coming out a little bit late. Um, so thank you to everyone who has been messaging me about where it is. I had the flu, um, so it was, uh, you know, this a little delayed, but I'm feeling better now. I feel great. Um, and I'm so excited to bring you Emily Billig. She is an incredible um, singer and actor and started working on a new adventure, not only as a mom, but also as a director and a writer. And we're going to be talking about the movie that she, her first movie that she has ever done called the Big 3-0, which is a wonderful movie that I got cast in <laughs> um, and I absolutely loved and it's been in a bunch of film festivals and it's won a couple of awards. So yeah, we're gonna have a great time and we're gonna talk about the song of the month. Uh, this month, the song is called U-Turn um, and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. Thank you to everyone who's already listened. It has 150 plays on um on youtube i'm so excited and now you can listen to it on spotify so please go check out the song please share the song please like the song um manic from last month has almost gotten 400 views on youtube which just i mean i can't tell you guys how much this like warms my heart um to know that people are listening to my music because that's why i do this i i want to share my music with everyone so without further ado, yes, we're getting back into it. Let's go to the episode. <laughs> Hello, thank you so much for having me, Molly. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, thank you for being here. I am super excited to have you on and talk to you about the big three O, which um, Emily cast me in. <laughs> yes, I was really lucky to have Molly and um, also just an amazing ensemble cast. Yeah, all together. So the entire um, cast and crew was just incredible. Oh my gosh. It was like, I feel so spoiled seeing as it was like my first, like my debut project and everyone was just so committed, so creative, so like not afraid to try things. And it was just, it was such an amazing experience. And like, I feel like, like I said, I feel spoiled that I got to work with such talented and creative people. I mean, I, I know I can speak for myself and maybe a few of other people. And I know everyone probably felt spoiled with you as their director. It was a easy, fun process. And, um, I personally loved it. So it was a nice shining light at the end of COVID. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like, I miss acting. It was just, I know. And I feel like it kind of came at this time. I know for myself, and I think we all sort of felt it like just not, we needed each other and we needed other creatives and just to have this moment to like be together and create something during such a dark time. So it was just a pot, like you said, a positive light at the end of COVID. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah no, it absolutely was. It 
And it's so funny. Like as soon as I heard it, I just was instantly brought back to like nineties, early two thousands, like Sarah McLaughlin singer songwriter. And that's exactly where my mind went. And my mind also was just going to like, I imagined myself like driving in my car, like the song took me through like a journey. Like you see someone in love and then maybe it was also like a breakup song. And just like, I could see someone running in the rain with the song like playing in the background, but also like driving in the car and like hit, like just belting their face off. But it, it definitely gave me that like Sarah McLaughlin just vibe, that singer, female singer songwriter vibe that I feel like we are, you know, we, we crave a little bit these days, you know, we're not getting that so much. So it was refreshing to hear. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm glad. Like I have never heard uh, a comparison of Sarah McLaughlin, but I absolutely love her. So (laughs) I am, I'm so totally into that. That sounds amazing. Uh, And I'm glad you got that kind of visual of, um, of the rain in particular, Because I think that at one point when I was writing some of the lyrics to this, I actually was <laughs> like watching the rain fall at one of my favorite pizza places in San Francisco. And mm-hmm. I remember sitting there <laughs> and I was writing this song and I was like, man, I really need like a second verse. Yeah. And um, and I ended up writing that while I was waiting for the rain to pass because I didn't have an umbrella. <laughs> See, you never know. You never know where, like, just when you have to kill time, where it's going to take you. Yes. Oh, a thousand percent. And yeah. And so like, so I love that you got, um, I love that you got all the Sarah McLachlan, like eighties vibes, nineties, uh, nineties, twenties vibes. Um, in terms of like a TV show or a, um, a film, like what could you see this song playing in, in cinema? You know, maybe because it's just like fresh on my mind, but I was just watched how I met your father. Um, like the, how I met your mother's like spin. And I could sort of see it like being played. Like, I don't, I'm not going to give anything away for anyone who hasn't watched, but like, (laughs) just like a moment of like, when she realizes like, Oh God, I was actually going out. I should have been going after this guy. And like, that is like playing, like just in that inner, like, Mm -hmm. you know, that inner struggle that we see a lot of times in film and TV and that we also just, have in our own life um so I could see it in like that type of situation but also and I'm trying to think and just like different like rom- romantic comedies are also just romance movies and again I see it like being played during that scene where the character is having this like inner struggle of like should I be going down this path should I be going down that path like- is it Reese Witherspoon we're watching? Who's like, you know what I mean? Definitely a Reese Witherspoon movie. Um, I'm also (laughs) thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on his name. He wrote the notebook. What is the author? Um, he he wrote like all those movies. Um, one Miley Cyrus's was in one of them. I can't think of it now, but what is his name? I'm looking it up because uh, <laughs> Nicholas Sparks. Nicholas, Nicholas Sparks. Sparks. <laughs> mm-hmm. You got it before I Googled it. Yes, Nicholas now. Sparks. <laughs> I can see it like in all in like his movies for sure. And like there's always that like towards the end that like come to Jesus moment. And the character is like, you know, all this bad stuff happens, but it always works out in the end. Yeah, you know? no, that's awesome because it's just so funny. Like that song was probably one of the most like painful songs to write. So I feel like, and it's so funny because like, it was just like, I was, it was basically like me trying to get over this person who I knew, like we came in hot, we came in heavy and I knew it wasn't going to last, but I was trying to hold on for dear life. And I'm like, you're not a bad person, but it's just really the wrong time. And I know. And it, yeah. And that's so, I mean, and that's something so relatable too. Like we've all been there, you know, we've all had that person <laughs> that we would, you know, in the time we want so badly to work out, but it just can't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it didn't work out either way. It wasn't, it wasn't the right time in this generation anyway. Cause I, I got married to my husband. I think like, well, I met my husband, I think relatively quickly after that like <laughs> I want to say like two years after um <laughs> yes. that's great well thank you so much for your review on the song and um I'm excited for more people to listen to it I I do I do want to enjoy sex obviously but I just I feel really weird making it all about me what oh, oh, oh yes I just don't 
don't get it, you know? We were having sex, everything was fine, and then he just dumped me. To our girl, may her 30s be better than they were this morning. <laughs> what the fuck is Jordan Cohen doing here? It is your birthday. You of all people deserve to feel good today. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 at the end of the month. Oh, it's awesome. Thank you. So let's go on to the big three O. And for those of you who don't know what the big three O is, please go check out Emily is um, Instagram pages and whatnot. Cause she's got some stuff up there for it. But the big three O is um, got a great bio. Do you want me to read it? Do you want to read it? You take it away. Take yeah. it away. <laughs> totally read it. Okay. So on the morning of Emily's 30th birthday, the guy she's been seeing dumps her right after they just had sex. Oh, <gasps> no, no. no. Her no. friends come over to cheer her up only to find out Emily has never had an orgasm during sex, which is just a freaking shame. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's terrible. Terrible. It's not my it's not based <laughs> off of my reality, but it is terrible because I know there are women out there and men. Yeah. And, yeah. There, yes, mm-hmm. there are definitely people out there who have definitely had this experience. Mm-hmm. And they decide to go out so Emily can find her orgasm and her self-confidence. Little does Emily know her friends have reached out to a crush from her past to help her find her big oh. <laughs> love it so emily um i know you as an amazing actor um i have asked you to be a part of different sketches i watched you with your sketches on um on stage and in you know virtual settings so what made you want to become a writer and director like what was the shift well it's so funny you know like i obviously my first love was always performing and I loved like being on stage and I liked, you know, being in films and stuff, but I don't know. I feel like I had gotten to a point in my career where I felt like I just wasn't feeling that like passion anymore. I don't know. I just I wasn't feeling that passion. I wasn't feeling like I was creating and I was just feeling like I was hitting a dead end and I wasn't feeling like motivated to go out and audition. And I felt like I needed to do, um, some soul searching and realize like, am I just continuing to do this because I want to say I'm doing it or am I doing it because like, I'm feeling, I'm still wanting to, you know, feel it and do it. And, you know, after a while I was like, I, I always, and I do think I will eventually get back into acting. I do see myself one day, but right now I just, I really wanted to create and I wanted to create roles for actors that I know and actors that I'll meet and just, stories, like I said, you know, strong female characters that we haven't necessarily seen. I also feel like a lot of, especially rom-coms are still written by men and it's, and trying to say the female voice. That's not actually how we are. Mm-hmm. So I just was like, you know what, this is something I've always wanted to do. And COVID kind of gave me in a weird way that permission to do it. And so I, just did it. And I had always wanted to like, write, And I always had been writing for years and, but, and I had taken classes, but I never really like finished something, you know, I would start something and then never finish it. And so this was like the first script that I finished. And so I was like, we got to make it now. That <laughs> yeah. we finished it. Um, and then that's kind of what triggered, like, and I had taken some classes, um, bef- right before COVID hit, I took this amazing class. Um, and it was all about like pitching and her name is Jamie Mo- Monahan and she's amazing filmmaker. And I took the class with her and it was all about like pitching and she kind of like taught me the steps and I was like, all right, now I'm like learning how to do this. I need to put it into action. And so I just did it. I was like, this is something I just want to do. And we did it. And I look back on it now and I'm like, I can't believe I started something and finished it, you know? And so I'm just one proud of myself for that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what made me like transition. I just really wanted to feel fulfilled as an artist again. And I wasn't getting that from acting at at the time. And so that's sort of how I was came. I was like, I want to, you know, write, direct and produce. 
my own work. I mean, and you did. And it's amazing. Like the big three Oh is like, it's like what, six minutes long or something like that. It's no, it's actually going to be, it's actually about 13 minutes long. Oh, it's 13 minutes yes. long. Guys. I, it felt like a, it felt like it went so fast. I was like, this is it great. does go, it goes by quick, but it turn it ends up being about 13, maybe like 13 minutes and 40 seconds. It's something <laughs> random. Closer to 14 minutes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a great story. It's a great story about these these women and I was I personally from a personal standpoint was just so happy to play a character I should a literal clip on my um actor's axis is um sexually empowered friend because <laughs> it, it was great to play somebody talking about like person like their experiences in the bedroom without it being you know it didn't it was like a little sex in the city it was a little like um, broad city, it, you know, it's just like a combination of this, like these realities, but definitely done through like a female perspective, you know, yeah. on the other end. No. And that's like, I feel like, and I love that you said that with the friendship, the friendship and the female perspective. And I feel like that's like the true heart of the film is the three, is the three girls and the friendship that they share and just like how they can be so brutally honest with each other. And, you know, a little gross, so mm-hmm. like not, you know, a, you know, a little just really on, like saying things that, like, I feel like we as women are so afraid to talk about sexuality and our bodies and our vaginas and just everything. And I and I just think it's time, and I know it's like slowly happening. I'm not the only creator feeling this way and creating work like this, but I think it's time to like talk about these things mm-hmm. and not judge ourselves and so that's why I really loved and the three of you I mean first of all the fact that the three of you didn't even know each other until we got to set was wild because the chemistry between (laughs) the three of you was again I'm spoiled that I had who I had on set because your chemistry was unbelievable and it felt like you were friends for years and so the conversations just felt so and and there was even time you guys were like improving and ad living and it was just so fun to watch it was hard to say cut because I just wanted to keep you guys going um and that was also really hard in the editing process too because we were like oh this is all so good (laughs) um everything you girls were doing but it was just so fun to watch women talk about actual women stuff and not judge themselves yeah and that i that i definitely also is like as you were talking about all this i i realized there the the the, not only the lack of judgment but the lack of shame it's like yes, she hasn't had an orgasm but that's not the real problem the real problem is is we need to get you know her to feel good so it's you know it's not the shame of having of not having an orgasm it's the okay cool we're gonna help you (laughs) in any shape way we can to give you like to, to try to like get you to a point where you can enjoy yourself because that's also with like a psychological thing. I think a lot of times with women too, like the, the pleasure of having an orgasm really is about like trusting not only partner, but I was going to agree with you 100%, like trusting yourself, trusting your partner and yeah. And just feeling comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And like, so I just am so curious. So what inspired you to write this story? Like, was this like a friend? Is this like, (laughs) it's so funny because I had this like, no. So like, I remember like in college, I was like, I want to write this one woman show called like, dear God, where's my orgasm? Just from like experiences that I had had in like high school and like being like in like when I was a teenager and just feeling very like bad about myself because, you know, a guys would just be like, not very nice. And I always felt like I needed to make, and this is like in my teen years and feel like I needed to make sure like I was doing something to make sure that they were feeling good. And like, you know, they could like tell their book, like I, some, you know, stupid stuff, but then it's funny when I was like 19, I saw this documentary and I can't remember the name of it, but it was all about like the female orgasm. And it, I swear to God, it changed my like whole life. So when I was like 19, I had like this flip of a switch and I was like, I'm doing things for me. Um, nice. <laughs> with my sexuality. And I am not, you know, like I'm going to do what I want with who I want <laughs> and do it for myself and not judge myself. Um, 
And that was like my switch. And then, so it's something that's always been in the back of my head. And then obviously that was a long time ago, <laughs> now, you know, 12 years late, no, 13 years late. Oh my God, I'm like, oh, no, 14 no. years later. Um, and, you know, it's no, no, coming no. in now, guys. Yes. <laughs> um, I, you know, just was like, I want to write something because I know that I, and I've spoken with friends and other women who like are afraid to masturbate or have like, even in their relationships, not just like through sexuality, but just are like always concerned about their partner um, and not themselves and are just like feeling like, oh, but my, my body is gross or like my vagina, like is ugly, like just things like that. Mm. I actually saw, I think it was like a true life or something on MTV about like women who were getting I guess like yeah, plastic their, surgery. Yes, some kind of surgery. Like I don't know, and it just it broke my heart because I'm like, that's awful and sad that one a doctor shouldn't even be doing that. Um, it should be said, you know, like that's just horrific. But and I just wanted to yeah create a space where these women, these friends, can talk about this, and Emily, the lead girl can just come full circle and have her moment at the end and really just feel good for yeah. her, you know? It does. Yeah. <laughs> Which is oh, yeah. great. Oh, she yeah. knows what she does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, it's so, um, it's so fun to hear your perspective on it because I grew up uh, homeschooled. So mm -hmm. we were very sheltered from anything sexual. And so as I got older and I went to public school, it was like, that must have been a <laughs> oh God, <laughs> late and total shock. Um, yeah. Not a good idea to throw your kids into public school in the middle of junior high. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, we were very sheltered from anything sexual. It was like, you know, we, I knew who the Spice Girls were, but I didn't know anything else. And, you know, like all the overly sexualization of, of people in general, I just was not privy to till I went to public school. So I was so, um, I was like, I wasn't afraid of my body, but I was just confused. <laughs> yeah, no. So it's, it's so interesting to hear different people's journeys because I was not sexually active until I was in college. Um, I graduated early from high school and, uh, my first boyfriend in college, I think I was, I was 18 and, oh yes, I had to have an 18 or 19. And, um, it was like, Oh, that'd be bad. Um, I was 18 or 19 and, um, we, <laughs> we tried to do some stuff in the, uh, the theater <laughs> and, and like, we're, we're it's like now everyone from, from my college is going to be like, I knew it. Um, but it was, I mean, the stuff that goes on in a college theater, um, I just, like, I'm just going to be the first to admit it. Like we tried yeah. stuff. I don't know. It was, but it was so awkward. It was yeah. so awkward because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I wasn't even allowed to like go and do the, um, what is it, the, 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 uh, sex ed. Like I didn't know anything. Which also sidebar sex ed. This is like something this is something like if I ever were to make a documentary, I would want to do on like sex ed in this country because it's not federally funded. It's not something that all schools provide. And it's something that I think is extremely important mm -hmm. because I feel like a lot of, especially when you're in certain parts of the country where things are repressed, you mm -hmm. might be angry. I don't know. I have this whole like thing about it. And I really feel strongly that there should be sex ed like throughout grade school all the way yeah you need mm -hmm. to know like I mean it would be great to have like a class on consent I mean this is the other yes. thing I've heard I, I finally watched some of the stuff that my friends had and my husband had like watched when they were in sex ed and they were all it was bullshit anyway it's all you know how to do is like put a condom on your penis and that's and then the ovaries are right there yeah like and that's how a baby's born but I'm like it would be how great would it be to have a class on consent how and great would it be yeah. to have, have a class on like what to do in a sit like if you're talking about sex ed, what to do in a situation where someone's passed out in your bedroom? You don't, you know, and like all the you don't do that. <laughs> you don't do that. You know, it's like the the British tea thing. It's like if your friend is passed out on the couch, do not try to give them tea. You wouldn't want to do that. You wouldn't try to do that. Would you yeah. try to take your tea bag and put it on their face? No. So what no. makes you think? You can do that with other body parts. 
I love that. I love that. I will send it to you. It is so good. And anyone listening, it's this it, type in British tea sex ed. It's I'm so right good. Now. Yeah. It is sex it. Ed. No, that's so funny because I feel like, and in other countries too, and also like, I mean, in the United, we're so like afraid to talk about things in the United States and like, God forbid. <laughs> like, yeah. But yeah. It's, I think it's something that should be talked about and also just, it's not like sex isn't only just to, for pregnant, you know, just like, yeah. and then I think about like LGBTQ kids, like in a sex ed class and like how they, you know, and they must feel like just all these different things. And yeah. so maybe that's the genre that all my films will. So that was actually, that's a great segue to my next question. So how do you factor music into your projects? And then do you have a strong opinion about uh, what you are envisioning, at least for like the pilot of um, the mood that you want to create with not only scoring, but singer songwriter music as well, or like pop music? Yeah. I, um, I, do, I think music is a huge part of a story. Um, obviously I wish music was cheaper because then you can have as many. Um, so that, so I really like, especially with the big three Oh, I really was fortunate because Adam, who was a PA Adam Surratt, um, he is a singer songwriter as well, happens to be one of my best friends. And so he wrote a song for the film and we used like the underlying track throughout this film as well. So like, I think that's really important to keep like a theme throughout the movie. Yep. Um, and so that was really just pure, just luck having him in my life. And just, you know, also it was an opportunity for him to create something and he's never done any, he's never wrote a song for a film before. So I think he really enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, I think music is really important and we wanted to create a song. I, there's a scene in bring it on where she's like jumping on the betters and there's like the song is like, ah! and we wanted to create a song that had like that kind of early two thousands vibe to it um which I think I know he nailed and so yeah, that yeah. was the inspiration for the music behind the big 3 song so I do think yeah I think music tells a lot of the story and I think it sometimes moves the story especially like when there's scenes with no talking and you're just you know watching the actors it was really special just like having someone who's so important to me be some be a part of you know, my baby. So that was really yeah. cool. And he's an incredible human being. I, I am so thankful. I got to meet him on set. Um, just so great. Yeah. Oh man, Emily, we are at the end. <laughs> this was so fun. This like, I'm like looking at the time. I'm like, Oh my gosh, this went by so fast. I know. I'm like, this is so good. Thank you so much for being, um, a guest on the show. I really appreciate your time. Thank really you appreciate your creativity. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. So I'm done.